Hello. Today we're going to be looking at simplifying square roots. Um, taking a square root, like for example, a square root of 24, making it into 2 times the square root of 6. I'm going to explain that process and then also a little bit more complicated question using, um, using variables. So whenever you're working with square roots, a bunch of numbers that you really should have memorized are the perfect squares. Um, 1 times 1, 2 times 2. The reason these numbers are important is because they will, you can take the square root of the numbers in green and get one of those two original numbers. So for example, the square root of 121 is 11. In other words, 11 times 11 is 121. So these are a list of numbers that you should memorize. Um, times tables are pretty easy to remember. 1 times 1, 2 times 2, and just filter down. Um, you can go up as high as 15 times 15, and it wouldn't be bad for you to memorize all of those. But here are definitely ones that, that should be memorized. All right. So our objective for today is that we're going to simplify roots or radicals. Um, this is our anchor right there, or our common core standard for algebra 1. All right, a property of radicals. 100, the square root of 100 is equal to the square root of 10 times the square root of 10. You can factor what is underneath the square root. Isn't that cool? It's really exciting. Hmm. You don't seem very excited about that. Um, I'll show you why that's important here in just a second. Um, let's try and simplify the square root of 18. 18 is not a perfect square. If you punch it into the calculator, you'll get some crazy decimal. And that's not very helpful for us. So what we're going to do is simplify this into lowest terms. Let me demonstrate. So first, you would find the perfect square factors of 18, if there are any. And that's why you're going to need to know that list. 1, 4, 9. Oh, 9. 9 is a, is a factor of 18. So what we can do is rewrite 18 as 9 times 2. Okay, so we're separating the factors. This can also be written as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And this is why it's cool, because we can take the square root of 9, which is 3, and then we will be left with the square root of 2. This is the simplified version of the square root of 18. It's 3 times the square root of 2. Okay, that is our simplified radical. All right? And that's why we need to know that you can take factors of 18 and separate them like this. So that's what we're going to be doing today, separating factors. Let's try it with this one here. You can pause the recording and try it out yourself and then see what I do when I solve it. All right, we're back. <laughs> Hopefully you did pause the recording and try it out. First, we're trying to find perfect square factors of 75. Our perfect square factors are 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5. Oh, 25. We can definitely have 25, the square root of 25, times the square root of 3. Because 75 is the same as 25 times 3. The square root of 25 is 5 times the square root of 3. All right? So step one is to find those perfect square factors. Just list them and see which ones are factors of 75. Separate them into the factors, and then simplify the perfect square factors. That's it. All right, hopefully that's the answer that you got. Let's try another one. 200. Oh, my goodness. 200. Go ahead and pause the recording. Try and figure that one out. I'm going to list the, the factors here. Um, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5. Well, 25 is a factor of 20 or 200, as is 4. 4 is also a factor of 200. Um, but I think that there's going to be a bigger one, so I'm going to continue. 6 times 6, 7 times 7, 8 times 8, 9 times 9, 10 times 10. Oh, there we go. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 is a perfect square, and it is a factor of 200. All right, so I can write this out as the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. Now, if I had separated it in, into the factors of 4 or factors of 25, it would have worked out and I could have continued to factor it smaller and smaller. But this is the greatest um, square, perfect square factor. So that's the one we want to work with if we can. Square root of 100 is 10. 
times the square root of 2. There we go. So now we have factored the square root of 200 into its simplest form. Okay. All right. Here are another couple that we can do. Again, it's nice to basically go through the process of listing those factors and see how high we need to go here. 1, 4, 9, 16. And keep going. Um, 5 times 5, 6 times 6, 7 times 7, 8 times 8. All right. At this point, my numbers are more than half of both of these numbers. So therefore, writing anymore is kind of a waste of time. All right, anything beyond 49 really couldn't possibly be a factor of a 48 or 72. So let's look at 48. Which one of these is a factor of 48? Well, 16 times 3 is 48. So I'm going to go ahead and try that one. Um, the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. The square root of 16 is 4. So 4 root 3 is our answer. Now 72. This one here is nice because it's 36 times 2. So 36 times the square root of 2, which leaves us with 6 root 2. All right. So again, knowing your times tables and, and remembering these perfect square factors is definitely key. When I would be doing these um, as homework problems or, or anywhere else, I would be listing them on the side. That's why I've been demonstrating how, how to solve these. Um, in any situation, you can easily reproduce this list. Just by going 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, just the way I've been demonstrating. All right. So here, again, an opportunity for you to go ahead and solve this. Simplify the square root of 24. And you can go ahead and select an answer, pause the recording, and pick the one that fits. All right. The great thing about pausing the recording is that I don't have to stop talking because I like talking. All right. I'm going to do it again. 1, 4. Hey, 4 is a factor. Okay, let's keep going. 1, 4, um, 3 times 3, 9 is not a factor. 16 is more than half. So I can stop at that point and say, well, I'm going to use the factor of 4. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. The square root of 4 becomes 2 root 6. Oh, here we go. When in doubt, pick C. There we go. All right. So C is our answer, 2 root 6. And we're able to simplify it. Again, look for the perfect square factors and simplify. That's all you do with these square roots. All right. Now, the challenging part to these questions is when we move into adding variables. OK? So we have these variables like 2x inside of here. What is the value for x that would make the expression equivalent to this? All right. So there's a couple ways we can do this. We could set them up as being equivalent to each other. 5 and the square root of 2x is equal to 10 square root of 2. And try and set them up and, and work out on both sides, what do I need to do to make them look like each other? All right? So we know a couple of things about this. Let me move it up here so I've got a little bit more space to work with. I know that 5 times 2 is 10. So if I want to make the outside 5 turn into 10, and I want to change the inside to just being 2, basically what I'm going to have to do with that x is make it look like this. 5 times 2 and get rid of what's inside there. That will give me the same thing as this. So the question is, how do I get from this step to this step? Right? See, 10 is 5 times 2, and the square root of 2 is there. So how do I get from this step to this step? I have to change x to being equal to 2. x needs to be equal to 2. So if x needs to be equal to 2, then what I would end up with in this first line is the square root of 2 times the square root of x. And I'm trying to figure out how do I make this square root of x make it equal to 2? Well, the square root of x is the same thing as the square root of, if we change it to the square root of 4, I sort of swapped there. I did a little bit of a swap of those two. I made x equal to 4. Now, why did I do that? Because the square root of 4 is equal to 2. Okay? So 
So I'm doing this. This is a really expanded version. Once you get used to this, you'll probably be able to look at it and go, oh, I know that that's 4. And 5 times 2 is 10. Root 2 is equal to 10. Root 2. So when x is equal to 4, see that? I changed x to being equal to 4. That made it so that I would factor that to being 2. And that made both sides equal. All right. It's a little bit complicated of a process. It's not, there's not really a, a set way to do it. You just want to look at them and try and solve them. So here's one for you to try out. For, and the nice option is with uh, multiple choice, you could just plug all of them in and try them out if you'd like. Um, but let's go ahead and see. For which value of x would the expression need to be simplified? Ooh. Which one would it need to be simplified? So this one's a little bit different. You can uh, pause the recording, try them out. Which one would it need to be simplified? Well, let's see. One of them is 6 times 2. 6 times 2 is 12. Okay, could that be simplified? What's the next one? 6 times 10, which would be the square root of 60. The next one, 6 times 4, is the square root of 24. And 6 times 13 is equal to the square root of 78. All right. So I've got my, my square roots now, 12, 60, 24, and 78. And I'm trying to see which ones of those would need to be simplified. Okay. So all I really need to know is, do they have perfect square factors? 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4. Just write them down. 25, 36, 49, okay. and that's going to be as high as I need. I don't need 60 for this. Um, okay, so I look at 12. Does it have any of these factors? Yeah, 4. So this one here needs to be simplified. I can simplify that to being the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, or in other words, 2 root 3. Okay. 60, does that have any um, of these factors? Again, 4 to 60 would be 4 times 15, all right? So that would be 2 root 15, all right? How about 24? That one's also um, a variable of 4 times 6. We already did this one, 4 times 6, which would be 2 root 6. And then the next one, 78. Um, 78, 1 is a factor of everything, so that kind of doesn't count. 78 does not go evenly into 4, right? 78 divided by 4 does not work out. 78 divided by 9 does not work out. 78 divided by 16, that doesn't work out. 78 divided by, and we can keep going down, 25 doesn't work, 36 doesn't work, um, and then we're over half. So 78 by itself, the square root of 78 can't be simplified any further. So which for which of the values of x would the expression need to be simplified? A, B, and C. And the expression that does not need to be simplified would be D. Okay? So with this one, you actually did need to work with every single question. Just to solve it and see. All right? And in this first step, just I didn't really clarify that. This one, I was just substituting the values x is 2, x is 10, x is 4, and x is 13. All right, so those are some sample type problems that you can get um, from the Algebra 1 anchor of, let me go back there, simplifying square roots. This is our Algebra 1 anchor. Hopefully that lesson has been helpful for you today, and have a wonderful day.